Okay, Mark chapter 9, verse 14. When he came to his disciples, now remember, he had three of them up in the mountain. He saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes crested with them. So here comes Jesus, Peter, James, and John. There's a disciple, there's a group of multitude all around in a frenzy. Straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to salute him. And it's like what we're going to talk about now is like, he here. Like, uh, what the trouble we're going to run into is like, here, and get, here he is, here in trouble, guys. And he asked the scribes. Those in charge of the scriptures, the roles. What questioning with them would be the disciples? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, Rabbi, I have brought unto thee, well, not really thee, but his representatives, the disciples. So, <laughs> when you take authority, in the name of Jesus, a pastor, Sunday school teacher, you are taking the identity of Jesus Christ himself, and you better be careful of how you act. Because one of these disciples, or two of these disciples, cause a stir. And you got to realize when, you know, because the Catholic Church calls themselves Christian. There are people that call themselves Christians, have no identity what a biblical Christian is, that you have taken the name Christ. Now, when we were first called Christians in Antioch, it wasn't a badge of honors. You, know, you act just like that Christ they talk about. You know, you upset the whole world. You know, you're, and it was a tormenting name given to a group of people, uh, it was ill refruit. It wasn't your, you, you know, look, I'm a Christian. So, uh. And when you carry today the name of Christian, you're supposedly going in the name of Jesus. You better be very careful on what your conduct is. Because if we call ourselves Christians and we're taking the name of Jesus and Jesus is God, the Bible says, thou shalt not take my name in vain. Okay, let me ask you something. Are you a Christian? Is that a name of, of your life and your standard? Vain? Are you taking the name of Christian and you're not even saved? You have not ever put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Are you a Christian living an ill fruit life? You better be careful. He said, I brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit, and dumb in the Bible is he's unable to speak. And wheresoever he taketh him, the spirit. So his son is directed by this spirit. And tareth means he's actually ripping the body. This son could be, okay, he, here he is. And you know, his arm starts opening up. Maybe his stomach. Hey, this has to have been painful. Now, remember, we don't have the drugs we have today. We don't have the treatment we have today. And he foaming. Almost like he's got rabies. But he doesn't. He's got this unclean, dumb spirit. He gnashes his teeth like the people in hell. This is a demonic devil spirit on the characteristics of the devil and where he's going to end up gnashing the teeth 
and pineth away. What that means is his health is getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, that's one of the things my daughter works in a nursing home. She would see patients pining away. Within time, you know, the patient would come in if she if she sees a new one or he's been there for a while. And at one moment, you know, hey, there it is. And then you just start watching them. They got one right now. They're saying, no, they, they know he's going to die very soon. And she said that a couple times. That's pining away. When, when you get, when you, like I did with my wife, you get a phone call. Well, we're going to do some tests. And you get the other phone call. You better come down here. And you're there in a the room, and your loved one goes off and dies. That's pine of the way. And I spake unto thy disciples. There's nine of them. Three were with Jesus. And it's funny how it never tells you who the disciples were. Were all nine, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not one. That they should cast him out. So he, respectfully, and this is the power that Jesus gave his disciples, that they, they heal, they resurrect, and drive out the devils. Well, evidently. And they could not. They were unsuccessful. And the uproar is, hey, well, you know, you're supposed to be Jesus ambassador. You're supposed to, and, and you failed. Well, John says he writes to us that, you know, many things have happened have not been recorded. And we have read in Matthew, we have read in Mark, that there have been times at places where Jesus could not even do a work because of unbelief. So the thing is, before we go after disciples say, naughty, naughty disciple, were there times that Jesus was faced with an issue and he was unable at that moment to do anything because of unbelief? Listen, God can't help you. According to Hebrews 11, I'm not going to quote it verbatim, but God will not and cannot help you if you don't believe who he is. It'd be like an atheist coming up to God and say, okay, let me into your heaven. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. That'd be like when time ends in the great white throne of judgment and a Mormon studs up to God, okay, what, what, what planet I'm getting? Hell, the lake of fire, that's your planet. When, when the Muslim steps up to, to, to Jesus at the great white throne of judgment, okay, where's my virgin? Oh, hell is filled with them. <clears throat> so there's unsuccessful. He, ans he answered him saying, he answers the father. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, faithless generation. This will be explained in a moment. How long shall I be with you? Well, we're coming to the end of Jesus' earthly life and ministry. How long shall I suffer you? And, and this suffer, usually suffer with Jesus means let, allow. But this suffer is, i got to put up with you guys. I can imagine Jesus when he goes off to the mountain and, he's has, and he has those, those nightly prayers with the, with the Father. And listen, you can't not lie to God. You cannot Jesus lie ever. He said, Father, you're not going to believe these people. You know, we watch them from heaven. We watch them for your throne. I'm telling you, it's, it, it's a whole different story when you live amongst them. And when they choose to go to hell because they don't want us, they're worthy. But I still love them. I mean, these 12 I, I'm working with, man, you won't believe these 12. Bring him unto me. And they brought him, the, the, the son, unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. There you go. There, there's the ripping of the skin. Right in front of Jesus. 
He fell on the ground. It's not a worship. He fell on the ground, wallowing, foaming. Wallowing is, is you're rolling around. And he starts foaming at the mouth as if he was rapid. And his skin is tearing open. So it would be blood. This was one of David's, David's uh, army officers. He said he wowed in the blood in, in the road until uh, Joab came and, and brushed him off the side of the road and put a blanket over him. Now, that guy wasn't devil-possessed. I mean, that's, he was rolling around. He wasn't quite dead yet. This guy, this devil wants this this. This boy dead. And he asked his father, how long ago since this came into him? He said, of a child. Now, Jesus knew that. But when you look at what Jesus said, oh, faithless generation. Right? How long has he been like this? And there's a reason. And oftentimes it casts him into the fire. Here's that child. Next thing you know, he's in the fire. Trying to kill him. And into the waters. Trying to drown him. And a mark. And listen, everybody who does, again, just like the maniac. All this, every time, is not always a, a devil spirit. But if you got somebody wallowing. Rolling around on the floor. Well, it may be a one-year-old child playing. Ain't an evil spirit, but for some, it could be drug-inducing. Listen, drug abuse is very close to the, the, the uh, devil. That's what America is now. It's, it's legalizing drugs. I've seen people like that. And you got people foaming at the mouth sometimes. Maybe rabies, but then again, maybe not. I know people in the hospital who, who's had the, fo the foaming condition of medical condition. Now, not all, not all. Not, you got to realize when you look at this stuff, not all the times are they possessed. But there is a characteristic of devil possession, like, you know, just because you get a cancer, it may not be because of something you've done in life. It may not be God is mad at you, correct? And it may not even be the devil. It may have been your spouse that smoked. Secondhand smoke. Okay? That's the wages of sin. It, the wages of sin is dead. It not always, doesn't have to be your sin either. And he has, this devil has a spirit. He's trying to kill the boy. It's not the boy killing himself, suicide. It's the devil is driving this this child, I don't know how old, to death. And so you get so many, today you get these, so many, these kids are jumping in the car and they're doing 100, 125 mile per hour speed chases with the police and all that. Are they devil possessed? I ain't going to give you the answer on that push. Driving 125 miles per hour down the road, you're asking to die. You get somebody gets involved in intoxication, then they get the keys and they get in the car and start driving. You know, are you going to say devil possession? When I was a child, when you wanted alcohol, you went to the spirit shop. And it was advertised as that, spirits. They had to clean up that name like AIDS. AIDS used to be grit. When you got somebody who's fascinated with fire. Now, not everybody sits by a fireplace as devil, but there are some people you know who that fire just captivates them. That fire is involved in devil worship. That fire is involved in, in uh, religion. And there's a group of people, unless you're baptized with, with, the, with the fire of the Holy Ghost, no, that's hell. <laughs> you don't want to be baptized with fire, but they're fascinated with fire. There's a church out there, and they, you know they got the cl the flaming clothes, clove of tongues from Acts chapter two. Oh no 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 no! 
They got fire in, in their title. They got fire as, as their footnote. They got fire in their service. They got a fireplace. They, get, they just captivated by it. You know, a cat will look at a fire and say, who oh, get away from that? You got some people fascinated with waters. They live by the sea. They live by the ocean. They live by bodies because they captivate. They go on their vacation out in their cruise ship, and all around them is waters. They they get the swimming pools. And I mean, California. You ever see California pictures of California from above? All you do is see pools. And some of them don't even get to use the pools because they got to work to pay for the pool. But they're fascinated by the water. Now, everybody has water, a pool. Everybody who goes here. No, no, they're not all of them. Some. Some are. Some are fascinated by a fiery water, humidity kind of environment. It's, you know, we got to go down to Florida for a vacation. We got to go to Texas. We got to go down to the Caribbean. And, you know, that's. Well, it's every vacation like it's everybody that comes down to Florida, devil possession. <laughs> That's a hard question, but no, no. Insult, yes. Reality, no. To destroy him. So I mean, it's not going out on a cruise. It's not going, you know. It's, to do something as you know, but getting a fire, but it is a purpose of killing this. Child. There are people for, for no reason, they'll go out, take a cruise, and then you know, seeing no, they're missing, they, they jumped overboard, they fell overboard. So, the devil, not the, not the boy, the devil wants to kill the boy, and it's quite interesting. The fact is. The devil has no power over this boy. Or this boy is strong in the flesh, but cannot resist the devil. Remember the maniac there? He's over there. He, he's, he's cutting himself with stones. This boy is tearing himself. What if thou canst do anything? Now here's... Can you do anything, Jesus? Have compassion on us. So it's known that Jesus has compassion. Don't ever, don't ever say that you know Jesus was incompassionate. It shows up many times. He had compassion on the five thousand. He fed them. He had compassion on the four thousand. He fed them. Help us. Now that's the that's the proper prayer. Help. Peter is sinking in the words, save me. That's the shortest, quickest prayer. And I know, you know, it's so funny because we Baptists and I went to to Baptist Institute and all that. And, you know, we talked about in, in real life that the quickest prayer is, oh, God. <clears throat> and Hollywood made a stupid movie, oh, God, and oh, God, too, and you know, you don't have time to say the rosary when you're in a deathly fall, deathly thing. And, and it's funny because I watched the movie, you know, the earth is turning to a volcano, whatever it is, and the guy's on the train, oh, very full of great. No, you don't, that's not going to be on your tongue. If you're unsaved, your prayer is going to be, God, help you're going to go right above Mary. No, they never say Pope either. And Jesus said to him, if thou believe, if thou canst believe, believing is a key from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. And like I said, Hebrews 11, if you... You must believe who God is. You can't be a, a, proclaimed to be a Christian and not believe in God. You cannot be a Bible Christian and declare to believe that 
The resurrection is faith. You cannot be a saved Christian and not believe that God is Jesus and Jesus is God. There is a belief. Israel, the 40 years, they did not enter the promised land because of unbelief. So the father pleads, if thou canst do anything. Well, there, there we go. Let's start with a doubt right there. I believe it was a blind man or a deaf man on the, on the road of... And Jesus comes along. He, he doesn't go doubt. He says, well, listen, I know you can do it. The question is, will you do it? Now, that's a big difference. If thou can do anything. Uh -uh. Well, I got a little doubt here. I know you can do it, but if, if you don't want to. That's two different things. Two different things. If thou canst do anything. I mean, that's not the statement you come. And this is why Jesus puts the belief. This is why Jesus said, oh, faithless generation. It should have been if there was faith. I know you can do anything. But will you have compassion on us and help us? If thou canst believe. Do all, all things are possible to him that believe it. Well, that's what you find in Philippians. I can do all things with Christ and strength with me. But you don't take it out of context. <laughs> because if you're, if you're a mighty, powerful, great Christian, your pastor is the greatest pastor in all things, and your church is so great. All right, let's go find a mountain for you to move. You see, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you could say this mountain... Be, be gone. I don't have that faith. I am lacking in the faith department. I'm not ashamed to say that. And there are places I should have faith. Maybe I don't. And there are places that may I do have faith and may I don't even know. You see, the Christian runs around with the word faith, and you go to this this Christian store that used to be, and you get faith this and faith that, and faith on the wall and faith on the coffee, table, faith on the refrigerator door and faith in the bedroom and faith in the living room, faith on the car bumper sticker, and can you think God could do that? No. And you wear that little mustard seed around your neck and all that. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Can you? I mean, there are things in Christian life, my life. That next step is like, <laughs> okay, is it a solid rock? Is it mud? Is it quicksand? Is it dirt? Is it going up a mountain? Or is it sliding down into the valley? <laughs> he said, well, what's the problem? I don't see that next step. And the Lord wants me to take it. Right now, I mean, I want the Lord to use me. There are certain things in my prayer life right now. <laughs> I know God can do it. It's just some... I'm afraid of those steps. And I am lacking faith. But with faith, with faith, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now don't be ridiculous, unbelief. All right, here, I, here we are sitting right here. Daytona Beach, Florida. I don't know where you are. Let's look at a difficult belief right now. Big Mac, onion rings, and a milkshake going to show up right now. I believe it's going to be happening. I don't believe it. So it's not going to happen. You see, come on, you don't really think, you know, a, a, a Whopper meal will show up. 
It would be quite interesting. That door locked right now, and it was that door dad and said, hey, here's your Whopper meal. <laughs> Come on, you don't believe? <sighs> what if I do believe it? And when God says, hey, listen, I'm going to show everybody right in the video. Here, here comes door dad delivering the Whopper. All things are possible. But the thing is, when we look at it, all things are possible, when you have the slightest doubt, or you want to put your two cents into it, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said in tears, Lord, look at that, Lord. 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 And he goes, he he he's, he he goes right to capital L. I believe. How's that? Help thou my unbelief. That is that is a statement. Is I know you can, but will you? If thou canst do it, I've seen and heard about your testimony and other people. I just can't make that next step and to believe that you will do it for us. Struggling. Come on, everyone has that struggle in their life. Don't lie to me. There have been things in your life you would wish or pray, or not be wishing, but pray for God to do. All right, all things are possible to him that believe it. You know how often I pray and how often I believe that God would heal my wife with her breast cancer and She's in glory now. But has she been li lived uh, 13 more years today? She'd be in a lot of pain, a lot of agony if she still had the breast cancer. Isn't there things that we pray for and God says no and then later on we realize I see why he didn't answer that prayer. It is great that he didn't answer that prayer. I believe, I believe, I believe. There's a famous civil right. I believe. <laughs> that guy's probably in hell today by his, his testimony. And he's done injustice to his people. You can believe and still have un the guy is being honest with Jesus. Are you honest with Jesus? Now, don't be in the sidelines. Oh, Lord, I believe, but I, I don't unbelieve. And then before the group of Christians, oh, yeah, I've got all faith and power. Ta -da! You know, I went into the Christian uh, phone booth. And I've changed and put that super S on. <laughs> Stupid. That's the problem. Faith and believing. And being honest with God. Because if you got belief and you unbelieve, God within the Christian in his time, if you're willing, God will work to help you in your belief system. There's one thing that, you know, and I've heard pastors, I heard my instructors say, don't pray to God for patience because he will work on you with your patience and you will not like the circumstances and the fact that he does to help your patience. Because patience brings forth tribulation. <laughs> oh, I really.
But you got to be honest like this guy is honest. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I've heard what you have done. Now, what is the unbelief? He, it doesn't say. Maybe you, hey, maybe you can do it for them. You can't do it for us. And there are some people I've met, you know, I am just too filthy for God to save. He may have saved you, but he won't be able to save me. That's, there's all kinds of characteristics. There's all kinds of lifestyle. There's all kinds of events. He says, oh, faithless, perverse generation, if thou canst believe. And this gentleman says, I believe, but I got unbelief. He's honest. Most Christians are not that. They're super stupid Christian. They're super stupid talking Christian. And they got the people around him think, oh, look how great and wonderful he is. I ain't there. I believe in God. I believe he's, he, Jesus is God. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the essentials of salvation. I am saved. I know it. I know where I'm going when I die. What's God have for me tomorrow? I have no idea. And what I believe I would like God to do for me might be totally opposite in what he wants me to do. And what God would want me to do, I may not be able to believe. I would never believe God would give me six years of street preaching at one place. I wouldn't believe from, from 2005 or six that God had given me a street ministry. I wouldn't have believed that God would put me into the prison system. And the men that got saved and the men that gave up their modern Bibles and got the King James Bible. I wouldn't believe all the lives of people. I wouldn't believe all the people came up to me and the, 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 to, to testify their say and what God has done in their life. Or how something I've done or something I've said or something has, has helped them change their life. I never, I would never believe that. But I believe God was able to use me. And with all that, I can't, I don't believe how God did that. How about the disciples? They just had the 5,000, had the 4,000. Now ask them to explain it. Faith, the substance of things hoped for. They all helped to have a, a fish sailing. The evidence of, seen, of things not seen. They had what, seven, what, the seven loaves of bread. Five loaves of bread and two fish. And they fed 5,000. Then they fed 4,000. And they had 12 baskets. And they had seven baskets. All right. What happened when they got in the boat? They're all concerned now because they didn't bring no bread. And don't tell me you're Mr. Mighty Christian. And I've, I've had some people, and I've even pastors. You know, they compared themselves to Moses in Exodus. Oh, really? How big was your congregation? How often did your congregation have no water? How often did your congregation have no food? How often did most of your congregation want to go back? How often did, did, did your assistant pastor... Make a golden cow that says, can't spell chicken right. Hmm? You're a human. You fail somewhere. You ain't perfect. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, uh-oh, controversy again. He rebuked the foul spirit. Now look, it's foul. Saying unto him, this, thou dumb and deaf spirit. Now, is the dumb and deaf dealing with the child, or is the spirit in that child too dumb and deaf? 
but the child is dumb and deaf. I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, rent him sore. So here he, he, he's answering to Jesus, the charge of Jesus, and he rips that child. Rent means rent. Remember, and Jesus died in the, in the veil of the temple, rent in two. And came out of him. And he was as one dead, as one dead, as one dead. Insomuch they many said he is dead, as one dead. But Jesus took him up by the hand, lifted him up, and he rose. It was a resurrection? It says, as one dead. It didn't say he died. They said he died. It was just a great calm. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately. They're not going to do it openly. Why could we not cast them out? And he said unto him, this kind. All right, what's the kind? We'll run back to Genesis. The birds after their kind, the cows after their kind, the kangaroos after their kind. It's a class. This kind of spirit can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Now remember, Jesus is going to the mountain, he prays all night, and he fasts all night. Matthew 17. There's a great deal if you study the scriptures about this story here. Matthew 17, 14. When they were come to the multitude, they came to a certain man. So this is not a parable. A certain man is not to say George, Fred, Charlie, it's, here is a man, don't you dare say this is a parable. Kneeling down to him saying, so oh, look at Mark didn't tell us that. This man comes and worships Jesus. So when he says, Lord, that is reserved for Jehovah. Lord, have mercy on my son. Jehovah, have mercy on my son. Jesus, have mercy. This guy was not a Jehovah witness. For he's a lunatic. There is a medical term for people who are called lunatic. Now, are they all devil possessed? Not all. So be careful when you start running to lunatic, because lunatic in your King James 1611 Bible, I know we want to deal with the modern Bible, lunatics means you have a perverse, foul, Mark, devil, unclean spirit. Some people are just plain, I'm not to be cruel, not to be rude, they're just plain crazy. Okay? So be careful. Not all lunatics are devil possessed. <laughs> you want me to say with Maniac and Dare, you want me to say with, with, with Mark chapter 9, Matthew 7, you want me to say all the people who are fascinated by fire are lunatics. You want me to say that. I'm not going to. But you turn around and say all lunatics. Sore vex. Now, what you read from Mark. Do you understand what the word Matthew saw? Mark tells us he's ripped open. The veil of the temple was rent. That was the word the Holy Spirit used. Matthew comes along and says, sore. I guarantee that boy was sore. For oftentimes he falls into the fire. And off into the water. There's that fire and water. 
And I besought the disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus said, O faithless, preserved generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. No unclean spirit. The devil. And he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And he came to the disciples apart. He said, why could we not cast him out? Jesus said, because of unbelief. Mark said it was charged to the father. Matthew says in that little quiet room that it, Mark may not have been there, you guys don't believe. For verily I say unto you, if you had had all faith as the grains of mustard seed, you shall say unto the mountain, move thence yonder place, and it shall be removed. All right, how about you go to that mountain? That will go pretty far in Florida to find one. I'll take a small, bring me to a small mountain. Move it. If you've got such great faith. How much money has people wasted on sign, faith, love, faith, and whatever? Luke. Luke. Chapter 9. This is three times. This is more than the birth of Jesus Christ. 9.37. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, so they were up on the mountain a whole day. Next day, much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out and said, Master, Rabbi, I beseech thee, look unto my upon my son, for he's my only child. Boy, we, all three stories get a complete, look at that love. He's my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him. Now, the father don't know what kind of spirit it is. And he suddenly cries out, the spirit. And it teareth him that he foameth again. All right, Luke is a medical doctor. So when he tears him, then he starts foaming. All right, the medical doctor is the foaming from the wound, not the face, the, the mouth. The, Lord, the, the, the child gets a tear in the skin from what I read from Luke, and then it starts bubbling and gooing. You know what I say? Gross. I bet you probably can find those, some of those things. If you look on YouTube or something, and bruising him, so that that foaming is related to the tearing with bruising. I get a bruise when they took blood out from me a couple weeks ago. So Luke, the medical doctor, says, "Listen, this is a tearing, a ripping, foaming, bruising of the skin, and hardly depart from him." And besought the disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and first generation. Look at That's quoted in all three Gospels. How long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him, Mark. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the child, and delivered him again to his father. And then there's no meaning of the disciples. <laughs> When you take the three stories, you take them together, this child has been in torment on earth. And the father says, hey, don't, don't we, I don't know how much the father's done. He says, right, hey, listen, I hear the disciples of that Jesus is in town. Come on, son, let's go. And he brings them to the disciples, and nothing happens. And they look off yonder, here comes Jesus, Peter, James, and John. 
And if I, it's probably like, you know, this, oh, I don't know, here he is. And it's probably half the crowd looking at those disciples say, ooh, you guys are trouble. But notice Luke went into the medical terms. Matthew went to the sufferings. And Mark went to Jesus and the Father. The servant Jesus, dealing with the boy's father. Deal, Jesus dealing with that unclean spirit. Then Jesus dealing with the disciples. Did the healing of the son help the man's faith? It doesn't say. And the attitude that we read in Mark is don't go off to be I'm all power and faith. Faith, I believe, is the shield of the Christian armor. And if you don't have faith, them fiery darts of Satan is going to come and going to get you. Oh, I got all faith. But if you're running from the devil and you got your behind facing the devil, he fires those fiery darts into your back and into your butt, your faith ain't going to do you no good because you can't hold the shield behind you. And I like every once in a while I see on Facebook this picture, you know, here's his, his armor, and, you know, he's got the shield, and, and, oh, oh, and he's, he's boasting, and you see an arrow right between the eyes where the, the, the slit for the eyes are. You can't boast and have pride and have the field of shape, the field of, the shield of faith. And don't go be bowing about, oh, how great faith I am. You know, the song is, great is thy faithfulness, God. Not how great my, listen, churches, how great our pastor is. How great our church is. How great am I? All right? God may put you to test. How many churches close because of COVID? Or closed because, you know, they didn't go out and apostasy, uh, go out and disciple. They didn't go out with the gospel like they should. How many churches have closed great in faith and their doors are locked? I guess you didn't have great faith. See, you got to be careful of what you boast to men. I know somebody. I'm not going to get the name. Very dear to me. And I see people all the time. I never missed a day of church. I have. I miss church because of sicknesses. I miss church uh, because I didn't want to go. I miss church because I had no opportunity to go. I mean, there have been, I have not been in church all the time. Okay. I see on Facebook, it's Sunday, be in church, okay? Uh, how many people are you bring? I've been to pastors. Uh, you know, I can't make it. I, I, I get shunned. Okay? So, so this person I'm talking about, oh, I never missed a day of church. Okay, God says, okay, that's very nice. I'll give you a stroke or two or three or four or five or six or seven. Then you end up in in your daughter's house, and they don't go to church. They are a Christian. They don't go to church. <laughs> Be careful, because there's a thing in the Bible, and I'll close with this: when it comes to faith in your big mouth, it's called reaping and sowing. And brother, God is into reaping and sowing, the sowing part. And it's all because of this big mouth that James says that you cannot rule that. Rule the tongue and shut up. All in Jesus' name of God. Because I got 
I can do all through all things through Christ which strengthens me. Go jump off a building and see how well you do. I advise you not to. <laughs>